Hello, my name is David Haygood Jr. Born here in Rochester, New York, but actually raised in Flint, Michigan in the 60s and 70s. Came back to Rochester in 1980, right after I graduated high school, and have been living in Rochester ever since. My artistic talents were recognized at an early age, uh, probably around second grade, where I started drawing a lot around the house. My family members would ask me to do things. Um, and even through grade school, we actually had a couple other artists who we had competition who can draw the best comic book uh, characters or uh, animals and different things. And we had competitions and people would actually pay us $5 a piece for each drawing. So that through that competition, we kind of honed our skills. After coming here to Rochester, I attended uh, MCC for a couple years, but because I was from out of state, they charged me double tuition, so I was basically spinning my wheels for a couple years. And uh, right around 1982, I uh, got a job with a company out of Ohio to reassess the city. And um, I learned fast, got that job, and uh, had been with them for three years. We reassessed Rochester. We did Webster, New York, which is a local town here and I spent time in Omaha, Nebraska, but after that three-year period between 82 and 85, I came on with the city of Rochester as a full-time um, real property appraiser. And um, that did some things for me, pay the bills or whatnot, but my true heart was still with what my gift that God gave me, which was the artwork. And I uh, um, Participated in a lot of the local shows here. Uh, mainly the biggest show was uh, sponsored by the Delta uh, Sigma Theta sorority who did their annual Black Heart show. And through that I met a lot of the, uh, the local artists and some of my biggest mentors were um, Calvin Hubbard who was a lot of people know here locally who taught uh, pottery and stuff through East High School and he was a big influence. Uh, along with some of the other artists, but they showed me the ropes of what it was to be a professional artist and to hone your skills and take your, your artwork serious. And so I did a lot of shows here. Um, those people who are familiar with Rochester, uh, we had the first indoor mall downtown, which we used to call Midtown Plaza. And uh, till this date, at that time, nobody had done a show, at least as far as black artists, um, held that floor at Midtown Plaza. We did a show there from, uh, for about two weeks. And through that, a lot of people got to know me here in Rochester and they know me by my artwork. And so that was a, a real big influence as far as getting involved into this community. Uh, right around uh, the late 80s, I ran into, this was a real pivotal point in, in my life where um, at that time, I was getting ready to have a, a surprise engagement party. And a friend of mine who came, he invited a friend from Philly who just moved here from Philly. And uh, he came in my house and saw one of my pieces. His name was Ian Grant. And he saw on that time on the wall was a piece called uh, Endangered, which was a little boy who was in a doorway. And he had this real serious and somber look. And the reason I called it endangered was that is the state, and still is the state of our young black men, an endangered species. And the call to the viewer is, what are you gonna do to prevent that from happening? And I had another piece called The Warrior, and those who know me know that piece was a, a black male uh, African who had a serious not threatening look, but you know that this is a person you have to contend with. And uh, he asked me, did I ever think about producing my work and putting it into prints? I said no at the time. And what he did, we got me in contact with uh, his uncle down in Philly. And we produced my first prints, Endangered and The Warrior. And with that, I started my professional career and getting my artwork around the world. Uh, right around the early 90s, Ian had moved to Detroit, which actually he was from. But what he did was start a, help start a company called Umoja Fine Arts, graphics and fine arts, I should say. 
And we started traveling and went down to Atlanta and because this was where most of the people would take, uh, the trade shows would happen. Anybody involved in art, this was the place to be in where you wanted people to see your work. And this is how local retailers, they decided what is the artwork they're gonna carry for the following year. And we kind of took that place by storm because what the other artists weren't getting was how they were treated. And Ian, through his corporate contacts, he, people saw how the in-house artists were being treated. And um, this was a game changer for us. Right around 97, uh, the, the game really changed when I produced a piece called Yes, Lord. And even to this day, this is a sought after print. And during that time, this was my spiritual awakening, which inspired that piece where my question to myself was, what is it like to meet God or how do you surrender to God? And uh, for some people who remember that piece, it was a man leaning his head back. And what that piece meant, a lot of people saw it as a black Jesus, but that was not the image, the image was man himself looking away from the world, but looking back toward his source. And there was a shining light coming through the cloud. And anytime you're in a position like this, you're in a, uh, a humbling position and you're giving yourself to the Lord. And that's what that piece connected with a lot of people around the world. And we debuted that piece in Upscale Magazine in November of 97. And when that piece went out, we got calls from Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, Japan, Germany, South America, and it just blew up. And actually for the next two years from 97 to 99, it was probably one of the hottest ethnic prints in the world. J.C. Penney even came calling and they carried it in their influences catalog. And that kind of put me on the map at that time. And uh, right around late 99, I, um, formed my own company called Gallery One Fine Arts and produced several of my own pieces. But right around 2000, I had to come off the road because I had a, a, a daughter to raise at that time and um, uh, it was just a lot of traveling. So I came back home and um, had more family time. And it wasn't until 2005 where I decided to open up my own gallery. And through my travels, um, what I always ran into, people in a gallery situation, they had this way of making you feel like if you're not spending thousands of dollars, you know, they don't want to hear from you. And I did not want that kind of feeling in my place. I wanted to be inviting and wanted to have affordable art, but also wanted to have some high-end stuff where people who were in that market, uh, some people that don't want to buy uh, just, they have moved past just buying prints and they want to buy originals. So I wanted to provide that also, but here locally, what I wanted to do is uh, set up a place where I could uh, teach younger people how to be an artist and to hone their skills. So through that, uh, that was my venue of, uh, of giving back to the community. Uh, but what I also found out was uh, there are younger people who have the talent but not necessarily getting the um, encouragement at home we found out that more schools are cutting the arts out of their program, so they don't really have a venue and a place to exercise their gift. Um, while I worked at City Hall, we formed, uh, these were several black employees, we formed the Black Heritage Committee. And what we wanted to do was recognize uh, our black leaders and the people that were making a difference in our community. And through those programs, we had a program called, uh, it was, we had several events during the month of February. And always the kickoff event, uh, which was kind of my baby, was the uh, Black Heritage Art and Jazz Show. And what I would do is feature a lot of the local artists and encourage them. They would have their artwork hung at City Hall and it would hang up for about a good month and a half. And as you know, in any City Hall, you have thousands of visitors over a month long time so people would see your work and you would get the exposure. And uh, this kind of, this was a game changer. Um, even to the fact where, just to give you an example, 
had a young man who uh, fairly, I, w I don't want to say low esteem, but people trying to take advantage of him all the time. But through his artwork, once he started taking classes from me, people saw a difference, a change in him, where he carried his head a little higher. And uh, once his peers saw his talent come through, they wanted to know what's been happening. And he told them about me, and they started to bring his friends and get their lessons also, to the point to where one of the bullies in class had knocked over his pencil. And this was somebody that always picked on him, but when he picked that pencil up and saw that he broke it, he was apologizing to him. And all the students recognized what happened because this guy is showing respect to somebody he used to pick on all the time. And an opening night of that show, his teacher came and saw his work properly framed. And this guy was getting attention like never before. And, and you could see the pride well up in him where he had worth. And this was a life changer to the point to where his teacher broke in tears because she saw a change. And uh, my philosophy is the arts can save lives. And that has kind of been like my calling as far as getting others to recognize their gift and encourage it. In 2005, uh, the Black Heritage Committee, um, they commissioned me to do a portrait for our then first black mayor, Mayor Bill Johnson. And he was an honoree at our uh, Black Heritage Gala. So what I did was I, I told the committee, I said, I'm gonna paint it, but I'm not gonna present it unless I'm satisfied with it. And I didn't finish it until like two days until the gala. And once I was satisfied with it, nobody else saw it until we unveiled it. And when I did unveil it at the, uh, the Black Heritage Committee at the gala, there was this gasp over the crowd. And when he saw the piece, he, um, he loved it, but when he went up to the mic, he declared that this is gonna be the official portrait that's gonna hang at City Hall. And what's significant about that on three fronts is obviously he's our first black mayor here in Rochester, New York, but uh, there are several um, paintings at City Hall over two floors in our terrace that, um, that are of the, all the past mayors, but none had been done by black artists. And also on the third front, a city employee doing it also. So we made history on three levels, but I'm, I'm really proud of that piece, and it still hangs today at City Hall, the official portrait of Mayor Johnson. I opened my gallery in 05. I've been at three different locations now, which I'm here on 2575 East Henrietta Road. I've been here the longest, and it's the biggest place so far. And what I do here, obviously, show my work, but I also used to show other people's artwork. But it also has kind of morphed into a uh, a venue to where I rent it out for certain events. So if you have anybody from 60 people or less, I usually try to keep it around 50 or 55. So short of you staying at home or going to a, um, uh, let's just say another hall that's gonna cost you thousands of dollars, I'm kind of in a sweet spot to where you can come to a place that is inviting. My artwork is on the wall but you also want to have a place where families can enjoy themselves. And I rent that place out for those kind of events, but it's also given me a place where I can play my music. I happen to be a bassist also. I play bass guitar. Um, I'm part of a band that I helped create and found back in 2018 called As One. It is a jazz R&B band. And uh, from what the people tell me, we're the band that the other bands want to come check out is what they tell us, but we do a nice job. I also do photography, which when I paint, I wanna paint as if I'm looking through a viewfinder, but when I take pictures, I wanna shoot the shot that I wanna paint from. So I don't know that other photographers have that point of view, but I can come from both sides. And that's where I can use my artistic ability to get the shot or something more stylized that a typical photographer would not get or see because I believe in composition and the composition is what speaks to you. 
But uh, this is pretty much what I'm all about now. I just retired from the city after 36 years of service, which gives me time to really pour into uh, my gifts and the things that I really love to do, which is my art, my music, and my photography. So that's just a brief background on who I am. Again, my name is David Haygood Jr. and God bless you all.